Hey, what's going on? You know who it is. You know what it is. All right, you guys, peep game. I had a chance to watch this Tyreek Nasheed video. And once again, I know there are some people as far as Tyreek Nasheed go. Some people like him, some people don't. You know, at the end of the day, I told you I can learn from everybody, even people I don't like. Most of the time, I don't, you, you know, I'm not one of these people that just get extremely upset with somebody if they say something I don't like. So I just want to talk about something that was proven what I've been saying. And this is going to further prove the so-called black and brown lines once again do not exist. And this and why you have to question this so-called Afro-Latino thing too. Because this particular person that Tyreek Nasheed had I guess doing a debate with proved everything I've been saying about how a lot of times the, the so-called black Hispanics try to play both sides of the fence. Like I said, either you're black or you ain't. So if you want to say that shit, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm black, but I'm, I'm like, nope, either you're black or you're not. You can't have it both ways. You may speak Spanish, but you can't be pulling that shit that I'm black when I'm around blacks, but when I'm not around blacks, I'm Hispanic. And he basically outed her. He exposed her. He he basically said a lot of stuff that I've been saying. Now, don't get me wrong. If you are, uh, uh, if you consider yourself black by, by all means, whether you speak a different language or you come from a different culture or not, this video don't apply to you. But I am calling you out that try to play them games. When you around black people, then all let's say you want to want to reap the benefits of so-called blackness. Like I said, I've been saying this about them Puerto Ricans for, for a minute. They want to have the perks. They want to use the N-word and, and, and talk. You, you know, they want to have the perks of so-called uh, blackness. They want to have the swagger. They want to have the so-called coolness and all that type of stuff. But then when they're not around blacks, when they get around their own people, they want to be Hispanic. They want to be Latin. They want to be everything else but blacks. And then at the same time, they try to disrespect blacks behind closed doors. And I've seen it. I know about it. So if you get mad and start talking shit, you probably the one that I'm talking about. Because once again, if this doesn't apply to you, no need to respond. No need for explanation. Because if you try to come on here trying to nigga explain to me, then you basically out in yourself. You one of them people that I'm talking about. Some things don't need no explanation. Because I'm going to say this once again for the third time. If... This doesn't apply to you. No need to respond. Real talk. But basically he was talking about the, some stuff with the long history of, you know, uh, the so-called Afro-Latinos playing both sides of the fence. Now, keep in mind, once again, I said you don't have to be uh, in particularly white to practice white supremacy. You can practice white supremacy on behalf of uh, white people when you have certain views towards, in particular, black people. The Asians have it. The, the so-called Hispanics have it. That's why I told you, and I will continue to say, there ain't no fucking black and brown alliance. And, you know, I get Hispanics that come on here saying, hey, man, you're wrong. I got a lot of love for, for, for my black brother. Bullshit. Bullshit. Double bullshit. I didn't expose y'all on so many levels. Now, like I said, at the end of the day, we could do business. But let's not try to make it look like we're one. You know what I'm saying? Stop it. Stop it. Please. Stop it. I'd rather you keep it 100. Like I said, at the end of the day, I'll do business with somebody that, you know, I'll do business with a Hispanic but at the end of the day, let's not make it look like it, there's a brotherhood and a sisterhood, you know, in an alliance because that don't exist. And it never had been. And it, it, it never had it never has existed and it never will be. D do you think I'm impressed when I see y'all marching in downtown Oakland like that means something? Because at the same time, you trying to get Instagram followers and Twitter followers, you know what I'm saying? Once again, it's pandering. So just stop it. Y'all doing the same stuff that Kamala Harris be doing. I, I'm not impressed. 
You know, I'm not impressed with you knowing about hip hop. I'm not impressed with you, you know, about you being a sneakerhead and collecting Jordans. That stuff do not impress me whatsoever at all. Because we already know sneaker collecting and, and, and hip hop is commercial now. I mean, we, we started the culture, you know, we elevated it, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, you know, it is what it is. It's commercialized. It's watered down. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. So that stuff don't impress me. It doesn't. But let's get back to some of the stuff that was going on in this debate. Now, she was some kind of Puerto Rican lady or something. And, um... She was talking that shit like one minute she want to play that she's black and she considers herself black. But then when she wants to make tar- talking points, then she tries to say, well, black people as a whole, she tries to distance herself from the blackness, as I've been saying, which they know for doing on a regular basis. There's this thing that a lot of black people fall for. At the end of the day, if some some white dude or some non black try to say that black people are, are hypersensitive, don't pay attention to them because they just trying to guilt you into keeping your mouth shut. They always do that stuff. How come they never say that stuff to Hispanics when they say, well, we against, uh, you know, Trump building a wall and all that kind of stuff. When they want to talk about immigrants and all that kind of stuff. Well, we could be saying the same thing. Y'all, y'all too sensitive about that. Y'all just need to accept it. If they won't let y'all asses in, they just won't let y'all asses in. If they kick y'all asses out, they kick y'all asses out. Because we need to start treating them like how they treat us. Because, see, that's the only way they're going to they gonna shut up. Like I said, do you think I, you think I care what some Mexican thing or some Asian or some white person or some uh, so-called other uh, non-black Please stop it. I'm just keeping it 100. I know a lot of people get mad about some of the stuff that I say, but it's absolutely true. But this lady's talking about this hypersensitive stuff. They always try to pull that stuff with black people. They, You notice they only do that to us because they have made black people feel like well we snapping out of that because i'm snapping black people out of that if you see something that's foul you don't don't be ashamed to call it out because they have made black people feel like they have no value they have no right to complain just be happy with the conditions that you that you're under don't say nothing just be happy we don't want to hear it well you gonna hear it you you gonna hear it you gonna listen and if you don't li- listen, we gonna keep throwing it in your face. Like I say, they never do that. They never do that to, to uh, Asians. They never do that to any non-black uh, entities, uh, groups, ethnic groups. They only try to do that shit to us. They try to make black people feel guilty about helping black people and wanting to look out for other black people. And then they try to make black people feel guilty about speaking out against unfair conditions. Just like they don't want us to speak out against police. Oh, oh, we're tired of hearing about woke people. Well, first of all, there ain't no such thing as woke because everybody is woke. Just like everybody goes to sleep. Like, like I was telling Bill, there's certain terminologies we got to stop using. Like I said before, I there's really no such thing as black on black crime because, like I said, people are not killing each other because they black. OK. Because, like I said, you didn't have people now try to take that away and try to throw that against us to take away the guilt from people doing harm to us that are not black. Oh, well, what about black on black crime? Like you care. But this Nick, the but. Like I said, shout out to uh, Tyreek Nasheed for like fl- flaming that chick. But she was doing everything that I was talking about. Trying to play the colorism game and Ty- Tyreek Nasheed just was destroying her. For real. But she proved my point. One minute she black, but then when it comes to 
certain issues, then she want to say, oh, well, black people are ultra sensitive and black people need to stop hollering about racism every time something happens. Well, most of the case, cases, it, it, it is racism. See, you got to understand a lot of times white people like to hide behind black people. They like to play that my favorite nigga game. Just like what Jerry Jones tried to pull by him basically disrespecting Dak Prescott. So the key people say, hey, man, Jerry Jones is a racist. So he tries to throw up Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes. So people say, well, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Jerry Jones can't be racist because Patrick Mahomes and, and, and Russell Wilson are, 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 are black quarterbacks. Man, shit. <laughs> but he mentioned Tony Romo first. You know, at the end of the day, we already know what type of cat Jerry Jones is. You know what I'm saying? And I will say this, getting to Mark Cuban. That's a nice gesture what Mark Mark Cuban did, you know, helping Delonte West. But Mark Cuban has said some racist things. There is a such thing as being a, a, being a racist, but being an, a, a respectable racist. He's not a hateful racist, but he is a racist. You, you got to understand racism coming in all different type of levels. Mark Cuban sort of is like, I would say, he in that category with, with Larry David, you know, from Curb Yo and Thuzum. Um Larry David's character is, a, is, is sort of what you would call a, a racist or at least a bigot, but at the end of the day, he he has good qualities. He's still a likable person, but he still it still doesn't take away the fact that his character is a racist, a, a, what some people call an accidental racist. So, like I said, I get Mark Mark uh, Cuban for doing that, but at the end of the day, I'm not finna make him out to be white savior. You know what I'm saying? Because that's another thing. You got to understand there's white people, white races out there that feel like they, they are everybody's white, white knight and pun intended. And they feel like they the white savior. So that was cool. Mark Cuban had a white savior moment, but it is what it is. That still doesn't take away the fact of some of the racist things that he said in the past. But I'm glad that Tyreek Nasheed let that lady happen. I think she was a Puerto Rican lady or something. But he basically, he basically was ethering her on some of her, her talking points. Like I said before, they try to play both sides of the fence. It, you know, when they with us, oh man, this my nigga, this my nigga. And then when they not with us, then, you know what I'm saying? Then they Latin, they everything else. Then, you, you know, it is what it is. So, it had to be said, and it will continue to be said. They really be trying to play both sides of the fence. And I mean, she just sounded so so ignorant and clueless about some of the things she was saying. She was talking about a bunch of so-called history that happened in Puerto Rico, you know, with, with colonization and all that type of shit, which nobody gives a damn about, and particularly me. Just like... When those Tyson Fury defenders was coming on my channel trying to defend him, saying the N word, talking about what well, gypsies went through. I don't give a fuck about y'all. The same way y'all don't give a fuck about me. I don't give a fuck. Okay? So save it. The only thing I want to hear from you guys is hey, Tyson Fury shouldn't be saying stuff like that. He know better. He's white. I don't want to hear that stuff. I'm trying to justify him saying that stuff. You know he ain't got no business saying that. Like I said, white people know the black community. They know that there are black people that are so, so sunken to where they they feel like they have to protect and stand in front of master. White mama or white zaddy. Which I'm going to talk about the Kardashians probably in the next couple of videos because I need to talk about Khloe Kardashian. But once again, let me end this video. Shout out to Tariq Nasheed for letting that lady have it. He smoked her. And that was just the bottom line. This your boy Town Biz. I'm out.